right. Just after 3 o'clock, it's the Lake Orion uh, Cares Podcast, our second edition here. We are live on Facebook today. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. And uh, Orion Strong, the new moniker that's being thrown around by the township. I love it. Help to support our first responders and anybody who's donated uh, anything to uh, to help uh, during this uh, time of crisis here around Orion Township. I'm your announcer, Ian Locke. Uh, this uh, Lake Orion Port podcast is brought to you by ONTV and the uh, task force at Township for the, uh, the COVID-19 task force. A lot of people, a lot of organizations around town getting together, working together to try to solve some of these problems. Uh, if you have any issues, if you uh, need assistance of any kind, um, you can reach out to the township at email via email at help at orienttownship.org and uh, people will be uh, get you going and get the, the food you need you can request things that you need if you need a ride to get, go get uh, medicine someplace uh, it's there uh, people are there for you okay um, a lot of things happening around uh, uh, Orion Township. We've got some headlines here. We'll share the headlines, but we also have a lot of interviews today, uh, including uh, the director of communications at the school district here in town, Mark Snyder. We'll call him a good friend. We've been working together multiple years now. I'm waving to him on the, the webcam. We've had some technical issues. That's why we we're a little delayed coming uh, live today. But he's going to share some great information about what's happening and all of the things that the school district had to do to get... This kid's back online learning. I mean, it's a Herculean effort by those guys over the school district, and he'll share some of that with you. Uh, first off, some of our headlines. Uh, like we said, school's back in session. Uh, everybody's at home. They're all online, but it's still happening. Started Monday the 6th at 10 a.m. sharp. The school bell rung, and uh, my kids were doing their work and having a good time. I think it was a little relief that they were able to do that. Uh, so, again, like we said, we're going to have some students on, a senior and a middle schooler from Walden, to talk about their reactions to uh, this whole thing uh, happening in, uh, during their school year in 2019-2020. Also, uh, Township has procured some COVID-19 tests kits for uh, local first responders yeah a great uh, effort by uh, township supervisor chris barnett he got out and about and made some contacts and all the people that uh, are trying to help around town able to procure uh, those uh, test kits and to distribute uh, i think he had over a thousand of them and distribute them throughout the uh, local area so don't call township asking to be tested because they're for the first responders who are out and about, okay? Uh, another interesting item that popped up that we got to watch out for, uh, boating. If you're going to take your boat out, please do not pile the pontoon with every senior class member and cruise the lake. Um, you're going to get complaints, and that's not social distancing, okay? Um, it's snowing outside currently on the 9th, so... Uh, that's a bit crazy, um, but it's April, right? So, uh, but if you're going to take the boat out, please do not pack it full of your buddies and start cruising. Uh, go two at a time, one at a time, or just stay home, okay? Uh, Lake Orion, uh, care, uh, the cases of infection here in Lake Orion are on the rise. Uh, masks, if you have them, wear them when you go out, if you have to go out at all. Uh, just remember the virus can float around uh, airborne for roughly three hours. You could walk, you could run, you could bike right into the virus and not even even know it so wear a mask and uh, we're seeing too that t-shirts can be used to be uh, altered into a face mask of some sort so uh, we're seeing those uh, videos on YouTube we'll try to dig some of those up for next week and uh, share those with you but yeah cover up or stay home um, what else we have we are seeing a slight flattening of the curve as they call it here in Michigan but Oakland County is still one of the most highly impacted counties in the entire state do your do your job and stay home and be on your guard um, food and cash donations to the Orion Center and Love, Inc. are coming in. Thank you very much, Lake Orion residents who've donated. Um, cash donations uh, through Love, Inc. have surpassed $2,500 already in under a week. Thank you so much. That's great. And all proceeds stay local to those in need. And uh, we, I know Mark will share this too, but we had some updates on the uh, the free meals uh, for uh, 18 and under. Uh, this uh, children 18 and under here in Lake Orion has been modified to two days a week, uh, Mondays and Thursdays, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Carpenter Elementary and the Cirque Building. Uh, so check uh, the Lake Orion School's website for more information and any other updates uh, to these programs. And to close out the news headline, 
And we'll get down to uh, have our guests on uh, the pod here. Uh, Orient Tar- Township, in partnership with uh, local printer MAB Graphics, are launching the Orient Strong Initiative. You can see the graphic on the screen there. Uh, stickers will be printed up and sold with all proceeds going to help the community. But if you're donating through Love, Inc. and you're donating through uh, the township, just let them know. And guess what? A sticker can be yours for free. So donate and get those things in. Uh, a lot of people in need. And grab yourself an Orion Strong sticker and show your support for everything Lake Orion during this time of chaos. All right. So, yes, this is the Lake Orion Cares podcast. I'm Ian Locke, Executive Director at Orion Neighborhood Television. And we're trying to bring you uh, up-to-date official information about what the heck is going on around town. Um, maybe uh, some uplifting music. Got a little bit playing right now. Something fun. Uh, it's not all bad news, right? School's back in session. And joining me here today is our first uh, interview live on here. Mark, thank you for being a uh, guinea pig for us. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, we're, we're doing this out of the basement of my home, and we're trying to make this thing work. So I um, appreciate you coming on and give us some time. No problem. I'm glad to be with you. All right. So you and I have worked together for a number of years now on various projects, and um, we're working together again. Um, tell us about the the effort it took to get the schools up and running again, getting those school, uh, the kids back to work. Just give us a little overview if you can. Yeah, sure. I, I think that it, it was a shock to everyone's system, to their lives, to everything that was going on when it first happened. And I think that that was kind of the issue is at first everyone had to adjust to kind of what their new normal was going to be. And we had to kind of as a school district, all of our administrators had to kind of realize how things were going to be different. The biggest problem from the beginning was the indeterminate period of time. And that was something that we didn't know at the time how long it was going to last. Now we've got a better idea since Governor Whitmer said last week that school will be out of session in the buildings, out of no face-to-face learning through the end of the school year. But at that time, we didn't know if it would be a week or two or be a month, et cetera. And I think that that was kind of one of our biggest obstacles, because how do you plan for an indeterminate amount of time if it so when we initially thought it was just going to be a couple weeks and then we'd be back in school either on april 6th or april 13th you know i think those were we were trying to academically trying to make something that were more resources we had this we still had this padlet of resources that our teaching and learning department created and for the first couple of weeks that's what we offered to everyone we said to families you know this is available it's online you know it, it was a lot of different things exercises they could do with their kids that um, there was all the different subjects in school there was virtual field trips you know all that kind of stuff and we just kind of made that available there's maybe 100 links basically between all the different categories and yeah. uh Carrie Anderson, our director of curriculum, put that together with the different coaches, and they had it great. And it was a lot of opportunities. But we didn't have a formal learning plan because at that time we didn't realize how long we'd be out. Yeah. As we entered spring break, they had they realized it would be a little longer, and they created the learning plan that debuted on Monday. And the current learning plan has opportunity, has different things. We can talk about that a little later. But in terms of the initial thing, our first instinct – you know, really, as a district, was to feed the children who needed to, who needed to be fed. Yeah. You know, who would normally get the food in school, the breakfasts and lunches, and yeah. so that was a major obstacle. Our food service department, led by led by Marla Ernst, our food service director, that was really the first thing we had to deal with. Even though the academics is what everyone focuses on, making sure these these uh, students are fed yeah. was really key. So what we did is we and the MD. The Michigan Department of Education worked with the state of Michigan and determined these guidelines really quickly about how to feed the children and that they would be reimbursing the school district and how often they would be fed and the guidelines of who could be fed. And it wasn't just our students, whereas normally in our buildings, we would just feed our students. Yeah. In this circumstance, they said it went wider, it'll, right? Yeah, it'll feed any student from the community, from any community. So they don't have to be a student in our district. They don't have to live in Orion. And so at first, we, that kind of left us kind of out there because we didn't know how many people would show up. But we figured from the beginning we'd do three days a week. And then we started and we got a rough idea at the beginning. We had two sites. We have one, you know, from 11, as you mentioned, mm-hmm. 11 to 12. 
And that's the way we started it. And for a couple of weeks, that worked out well. And we fed through spring break, which is not something that not a lot of school districts did. But we thought it was important for our community to still have that connection and not be jumping away for a week and then trying to come back. Yeah. yeah. We did find out, though, as you mentioned earlier, that we needed to evolve the plan a little bit. And now it's on Mondays and Thursdays, still at the same site, still at the same time. Yeah. And the number of meals that have been distributed, I mean, we're talking, I, it, the one meeting we were in, it was mentioned 3,000 plus. Is that accurate? Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, well, it's an interesting number because what we're doing is we, we usually have somewhere in the 500 a little bit more pickup range, but they get a certain number per of meals car. Till the next, I got gotcha. you. Till the next time that they're going to be fed. Yeah. And, and so till the next meal distribution, I guess I gotcha. it, would, it would be a better way to say it. So, you know, they'll pick up on Monday and the next pickups on Thursday. So yeah. they'll get three days of meals, which is six meals per, because there's a breakfast and a lunch for each of those days. And we've been feeding through the weekend too. So it, so the, the total number of meals is not necessarily that many people walking up every time. It's the number of bags and then- So there are multiple you know, but, meals going with right. cars, but, but yeah, the families. Thing, the biggest thing I want to reiterate, Ian, and we want the whole community to understand, these are meals for people in need. Yes. You know, we're, we're not giving, the goal is not to feed every child you know, regardless, we want to take care of the children who are in need. And that, and well, and I say children 18 and under, the special education students who are 18 to 26 in our phases program, the post-secondary kids are also included. In okay. This. Good to know. Now that's, that's a good clarification. Um, and, you know, like you said, plans are launched, plans evolve, and sure. and that's a moving target all the time. Um, and speaking of a moving target, especially when the discussion was, uh, let's get these kids back to learning uh, technology. Um, I mean, the amount of share with how many, just so people people don't understand how many people are involved, kids going to school, how many staff members, uh, the instructors, the administrators behind the scenes that are working constantly to get this thing actually functioning and trying to get the technology out to those who need it. Give a, just, I mean, we could talk a week on the efforts that were put into this, but yeah. give me a quick, uh, everybody listening, a brief overview of what well, it's really a, it takes. Sure. It's remarkable really how many people are involved and it's all these different areas. Obviously, you know, the superintendent, Mary Angelopoulos, is involved in everything and she's overseeing everything, but everyone else has their own areas. And our three assistant superintendents are really the ones driving all of these things. John Fitzgerald, the director of finance, he oversees the food service. So Andy oversees the operations and the finance. So he has his hands in a lot of different areas, seeing all the changes in the finance, the financial situations, when we're going to get paid, how long the money is going to be, when we get the money from the district, I mean, from the state, you know, that we yeah. are normal allocations. Then Rick Garnett is the superintendent human assistant superintendent human resources he's in charge he deals with a lot of our legal issues he deals with the staff members and how they're going to come back and <laughs> how they're involved and then heidi mercer who is our assistant superintendent of teaching and learning she's involved in many things obviously the bond in the bond situations are still continuing in oh, virtual yeah. meetings so yeah, regular business home, still taking place yeah once the stay home order happened though we had to stop construction and that's a state mandated <laughs> yeah. thing and you can see at, at Carpenter Elementary and at Orient Oaks, things had already begun. So those are kind of paused until yeah. the stay home order is lifted. But at the same time, you know, Ms. Mercer, what she's she's overseeing that. And so those there are virtual meetings. This is another thing right here. We had to learn this whole opportunity and the, the whole idea that we can do virtual meetings. And yeah. what's the security with that? How do we interact can we can everyone learn how to do this when we haven't done these before and how to, what's the learning curve with that so ms mercer has been on the edge of that but in terms of the technology which is kind of where you started this whole yeah question Ian, i mean she's working with the technology department in in the sense to figure out we initially we had to kind of do a survey and figure out who needed yeah. computers who didn't have them in their homes yeah, what's what how, exactly right so uh, we had staff members who needed computers because they don't necessarily have laptops and they only work with their desktop computers and now they can't go back to their desktop <laughs> computers. And then yeah. we had, you know, we had to survey our community and then prioritize the need in our community who had no devices, who only maybe had a smartphone in their home and their kids 
are going to be doing more lessons as we go forward. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the, the evolution. We didn't do that initially because we just had that padlet that I was talking about yes. resources. And as the learning and the academic piece has grown, we needed to find a way to get these people technology and uh, let them borrow some laptops for a certain period of time. Yeah. And uh, my wife works for the Clarkston, Clarkston schools. So, I mean, it's not just one school district that's dealing with this. It's everybody right. around. It's everybody across the state, the hundreds of school districts, the, you know, dealing with, hey, we all need hotspots to get out to those who don't even have Internet access at home to even do the lesson. So right. there's other and barriers that you guys deal with. Absolutely. And that's part of the challenge of Michigan Department of Education and even Oakland County that there's such a disparity in the relative affluence of the different districts and the resources in different districts. You know, Lake Orion is very fortunate because, you know, we have a community of a very diverse community. We have lots of people with different means and we want to take care of the ones who have fewer means and the ones who have more means, you know, they can, they already have some of these issues in place, but in some districts, you know, they have, they don't have any computers to give to other people to their students, you know, and everyone would need one or everyone, yeah. they don't have internet access. And we've found, we've tried to share different ways for some of those people to get discounted internet access. But those are the challenges that are faced even within our county. And then you could take it to a state level. And that's what makes some of this really challenging yeah. because Michigan Department of Education and Governor Whitmer are putting out, she's putting out executive orders that are blanket for the whole state and everyone is interpreting it within their own means. Yes. And that's one of the challenges here because we have to take those executive orders and interpret them. And like we had had, as you mentioned, a new learning plan that debuted this Monday, April yeah. 6th. But now the executive order came out and about, and we interpreted it at the end of last week about schools and the learning process. And now we have to take that and evolve this learning plan again <laughs> to make sure we meet all those state standards. And that's, and uh, just to wrap up too, it's, it's an ongoing unknown, you know, because until Absolutely. we know exactly what's going to happen health wise and in, in the environment, you guys are, again, we talked about it at the top, a moving target that you guys are just trying to keep ahead of and trying to get these kids uh, active and doing what they should be doing at this time of year. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing we want to do. You know, their, their social and emotional well-being is really something that we've tried to take care of, and we've tried to do the best we can remotely. Our mindfulness instructor, Stephanie Harris, has been wonderful. We're posting, she's creating videos, and we're posting them three times a week. There's one for adults, there's one for teens, there's one for elementary school kids, and those are on our website and on our YouTube page, and those are things that we can share, and hopefully everyone takes, you know, can sit down and watch them. You know, you can contact us if you need, if you can't find them, and uh, you can contact Owen TV, they can help you find them. I mean, those Absolutely. are resources to help people calm down. Everything's unknown at this point, and there's a lot of anxiety and stress, and these are things that we have the ability and Stephanie Harris is trained in this. So, you know, you watch one of those for 10 minutes and hopefully it can help you do a little calm or one of your children calm down a little bit. I, I just want to touch back on what you mentioned, Ian, about the army of people who are basically yeah. involved in this in our district. Always and, going, know, have, no days off. <laughs> yeah, we have 1,100 staff members and, you know, we have food service people helping. We have transportation people helping all with the food, food distribution. We have teachers, you know, who are helping make the lesson plans. We have instructors you know, our, our, co our instructional coaches yeah. who are working with Mrs. Mercer and Mrs. Anderson and our curriculum and teaching learning department, the heads of that, that to make, you know, the lesson plans and find out what our kids need. People interpreting thing. We have all of our staff, you know, have roles. And now we're trying to find a way for everyone to do their roles yeah. when they're outside. We're, we're just releasing this week in terms of counseling and doing that remotely mm. so that, you know, students in the, all the different schools can find ways to reach out to their counselors if they need some help instead of just walking in or making an appointment as they would yeah. in school, they can still connect with those counselors. So and we're trying to take care of everything and it's, we're learning, we're doing it all on the fly. And this is really what makes, you know, you see some of those hashtags going around about, you know, public schools work. And that's basically what's happening here because we've remade public schools from a remote setting entirely in the span of a month. And really that says a lot about our industry and, you know, we don't know how much, Hopefully people value that because yeah. it, it's really to remake your whole business. You know, we see a lot, unfortunately, obviously we feel for all the businesses that are shutting down and can't do this remotely because it's, it's physical or something like that. But I think that we hope everyone appreciates yeah. and understands that, you know, to remake our whole business without the buildings <laughs> is really uh, – 
it's something that we're very proud to of, say it's a challenge is an understatement but you should be proud and uh, you know everybody uh, as a like orian parent of uh students attending the schools um i'm pleased with what you're doing you know um you know as we said before we've worked together on uh projects through on tv in the school district but as a parent just watching what's happening it's like yes you have to be patient and it will come and we're doing the best we can you guys are doing the best you can and right now um it's up and running and so far it's working obviously uh we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day but um from from us here in the community and uh, ON TV and everybody we want to thank you guys everything you're doing and keep it up great. and uh, I'm sure we'll get more uh, updates from you as we go along and sure. we'll have you back on uh, again uh, with us on the Lake Orion Cares podcast uh, Mark Snyder Director of Communications at the Lake Orion School District um, um, always a busy guy out and about. I don't think you get, do you get days off? <laughs> I I see, mean, I you're know, always you're taking pictures, days. always taking videos. Uh, you got more energy than I do. I know that for sure. <laughs> I appreciate you having me on. Here. All right. Thanks. Thank and Mark, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Mark Snyder um, for the schools. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, took time out of his busy day. You know, like he said, uh, that's it. You know, they're out there doing what they can to get the kids uh, going and all that good stuff. So um, just keep an eye out to the uh, Lake Orion Schools website to, for more information, and we'll talk to Mark later. Thanks, Mark, once again. All right, we continue on with the podcast. And um, I'm going to try to find Joe Johnson here. Where did he go? Let's see if he's available. Again, uh, Zoom. I don't know if you guys are using Zoom uh, to talk to family members and all, all that good stuff. But Zoom changed their software overnight on us without um, us uh, realizing it. So here we are going, um, how are we going to do a podcast planned with interviews um, without uh, audio coming from our webcam. So I'm calling Mr. Joe Johnson. Mr. Joe Johnson, do you hear me on the uh, phone line? Do you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? You there? Okay. Give me an audio test. Well, real quick. He's here. All right. Well, we just finished our interview with uh, Mark Snyder. You were supposed to be on with us, but again, we mentioned Zoom changing the way they do things overnight to throw us a little curveball, <laughs> and we weren't ready for that. So here we are right now. Um, we talked about some of the headlines. Uh, now, you were uh, monitoring some uh, news earlier today uh, from the uh, governor's office. What do you have? Yeah, it comes as no surprise. Uh, the governor announced that the stay-at-home order has been extended to the end of the month. Um, that sort of falls in line with what the president announced uh, at, what, about a week ago. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like we're going to be uh, staying home until the end of April. Uh, at the very uh, latest, uh, we'll see if that gets adjusted at the end of the month. So, uh, so that's breaking news that was just announced uh, moments ago. Um, also, one of the big things that everybody's talking about right now are masks. Yeah. Um, it's, a while back, they said, "Well, we don't know if that's going to help at all." Now they're saying it does make a difference, and so. For those who are confined to their homes, they've taken up the hobby of making masks at home. And um, there are YouTube instructional videos on how to put them together. I lucked out. A friend of mine uh, made this for me. I actually have two made with elastic bands. Um, it's important that the mask has uh, a pouch okay. in it where you can insert um, insert uh, material inside. Um I did a Google search to find out what makes a good filter, and one thing that came up at the top of the list are blue uh, shot clocks. They said that that, that filters out like 90% of anything that can get through there. So um, but there are, you can Google it and, and find other filter materials. It is important to, to wash the mask and replace that filter material. Um, okay. But it really is strongly encouraged that, uh, when you go grocery shopping, when you go to the post office, when you're out and about, it's really strongly encouraged that you wear a mask, yeah. um, not only to prevent spreading it, but to prevent uh, catching it as well. Uh, is your family well stocked in with uh, masks in case you need to make a run? So we do have a couple of masks that we um, actually – we. 
my daughter found them, and I'm trying to remember why we had them. And it goes back to, um, I think it was a year ago, where she's getting ready for a regional track meet. And my son had the sniffles, and she goes, man, you're not getting me sick. You know, just before I made, mean, you know, the Michigan regional finals. And so we bought them just as a kind of a goof and we had them in our medicine cabinet and she brought them out and we've, I think we've got six on hand. Uh, they're not the, you know, the, the high end, uh, masks that you read about that the first responders would have, but we have some that we could modify if we need to. But I also saw, I don't know if you saw this, but the, um, the masks, uh, you know, using cloth from a T-shirt, uh, that's starting to go around. Um, you fold it enough times, you can put a strap in it. I just saw that just the other day and shared it at the top of the hour um, with, when we started at 3 o'clock on the air with the podcast today. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of variety going on. People are doing what they can. Um, now, you were out and about. Uh, sticking with the theme of the podcast today is about the schools and everything going on. And um, you were out and got some uh, footage of uh, the food distribution um, at uh, Carpenter Elementary, I believe. Um, I was actually at the CERT building. CERT building, okay. It was, uh, it was pretty amazing to see. You know, obviously I kept my distance. Um, but starting at Lake Orion Community Schools is offering free meals to children 18 years old or younger. Families are encouraged to take advantage of curbside pickup at the CERC building. Enter the property um, from Scripps Road. What they're doing is on Mondays, um, they're giving uh, families enough food to last uh, three days, I think it is. Um, breakfast and lunch for each child in the family. And then on Thursday, at the same time period, 11 to noon, um, they're giving enough uh, food, breakfast, and lunch to last through the weekend uh, till Monday. No <laughs> appointments necessary. Uh, children need not be present, so one representative of your family can drive to the CERT building. Um, you want to tra- You want to enter from Scripps Road, travel to the north side of the building where the gymnasium is, uh, you'll see everyone lined up out there with carts and bags of food. You tell them how many children are in the family, 18 and younger. Yeah. They hand you the food, and you drive off. It could not be any easier. Um, what an amazing program provided by LOCS um, to make sure that kids don't go hungry during this time. It's, well, it's, that, it's, it's really it's, emotional. It's great information. You were out and about. You got some good footage. And as I was rolling it in, I stomped all over you with the audio. <laughs> like we said, we're just trying to get this tech down. And um, so I, I, I apologize for that, our listeners, and to you, Joe, that you're giving this good information. And I'm scrambling back here going, what is that music? So, But we got the footage out there. And uh, like you, you know, like we, like Owen TV does and what you do, everybody in the community knows who you are rolling around getting a – Wearing that blue hat, sport knowing TV, and uh, getting that news, and we're still doing it even today. So, um, they, yeah, go they ahead. They said that on that Monday they were giving out close to 500 uh, meals. Yep. which I just thought was amazing yep. and, on that Monday alone. And what Mark was saying was that uh, it's 500 meals, um, not necessarily 500 or th- like total 3,000 meals, but not 3,000 people uh, because, mm-hmm. you know, the, the variety of cars coming in with, you know, families and that sort of thing. So, all right. Yeah. Well, good stuff, Mr. Johnson. I'm going to sign you off and try to get some of our other interview guys in here. And um, I'll keep you on the webcam and we'll uh, we'll meet up with you before we, cut out of here uh, just to get some final thoughts. Cool? Sounds good. All right. Um, Joe Johnson cruising at his uh, humble abode in the man cave. And uh, if you haven't seen some of his uh, cool videos, take a peek at uh, YouTube and Orion Neighborhood Television. He put a really cool short film together with a lot of movie props that are just, I mean, we needed that laugh. (laughs) We needed that right now. So, okay, Joe, we're going to try to get some of our interviews in. So we'll check it within just a sec. Thumbs up. Cool. All right. So that's that. And um, another interview down, we survived. We're about 28 minutes into the podcast, and we are moving on. So, you know, a lot of different things happening um, here. Um, 
in Lake Orion. Uh, again, the theme of this uh, Lake Orion Cares podcast is, uh, you know, the schools. What's happening in the schools? Mark was on the communications director for the school district, doing a nice job of sharing the, all that information. Um, but also, I want to share something with everybody at home, too. Uh, a lot of what Mark said can be seen and reviewed at um, orionontv.org under our video on demand uh, site. So the school board meeting from just a day ago on April 8th is available for viewing. And um, if you want to see more, the agenda is attached. You, uh, there's a lot of information about the near term of what the schools are going to be doing. And um, we encourage all of our uh, concerned citizens to get out there, uh, click on that link at orionontv.org. Again, it is our video on demand uh, site. And uh, we have all the meetings posted there. Um, just uh, search for the education channel and say, watch now, and you should be good to go. Now, um, moving on. So we had the uh, administration side of things. Now um, we're going to make a call to a middle school student, Kenny, and we're going to get a middle school student's uh, thoughts and ideas on what is happening here today. Um, Kenny, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So, Kenny, um, eighth grader at Walden. We're mm -hmm. having a nice nice school year going along, and all of a sudden, what happened? <laughs> Co well, yeah, I know. It's a, a little virus popped up, right? Yeah. So, now, with uh, how are you handling not being at school? Are you missing uh, being in the building and taking part in all the activities with your friends? Yeah, I'm missing it. I mean, it's it's really weird and boring because you're just at home all day and you don't really have much to do. Yeah. So, but you're keeping in touch with your, uh, your buddies. And so how are you keeping in touch with your friends? So I play video games with my friends every day, which is nice because I get to talk to them and we get to have like normal conversations, but we all think that it's still really weird. Even though we're all talking to each other, it's nowhere near the same. Yeah. Uh, weird, I think, is an understatement. Um, surreal and just kind of wacky are yeah. kind of the ones I'm throwing out there. Um, now, as far as, you know, talking to your parents, uh, full disclosure, Kenny is my son. Uh, so I know these answers, but we want to share with the community what's going on um, with you Um especially with school getting back in. Was it a kind of a relief or, you know, because everybody complains about school. I got homework and all that kind of stuff. But now with it being gone and also coming back this uh, past Monday, uh, what are your thoughts? Um, I kind of enjoy it because having the schoolwork to do, even though it's schoolwork and it's sometimes not the greatest and it's not fun sometimes, it gives you something to do and to cure you of your boredom yeah so that's what school's for to cure you of your boredom <laughs> i think that's a bumper sticker what do you think maybe maybe i don't know it works <laughs> or a t-shirt so um if you had your choice i mean what was your initial oh, let's do this what was your initial reaction when you heard the news that's you know you weren't going back to your actual school building for the rest of the year um, I was sad because I'm not going to be able to see my friends until like six months about probably till school starts up again in the summer in the fall. Yeah. And it made me really upset because I just wanted to go back. Yeah. And, you know, nobody expected this. You know, it's not something that you see on the calendar go, oh, yeah, here comes a, a crazy lockdown virus situation, pandemic thingy. Um, yeah. but, uh, you're holding up fine. Um, did you pick up any new hobbies or anything during the downturn or are you just sticking to video games? Mm, just sticking to video games with my friends. Yeah. Makes sense. All right. How about your reading? Has your reading, uh, increased or finish any books? I haven't finished any books, but I'm reading three at once. Oh boy. But I'd say my reading has increased. Okay. Because I have more time to do more stuff, so it gives me more time to read. Awesome. 
Well, Kenny, thank you so much for taking a couple moments to uh, chat with everybody around Lake Orion about uh, the middle schoolers' perspective. Now, you'll be mm-hmm. at the high school next fall. Um, yeah. Any, any, would you like to give any messages to your teachers out there? Do you have one that you'd like to say hi to and thank you f- to? Because uh, I don't think you guys will be going back to uh, thank your teachers before you're uh, out of middle school. Oh, I want to thank my teachers, all the ones that I've had all throughout all three years, because have going to uh, high school next year, I probably won't see them for a really long time, Yeah, which is sad. So I want to say bye to them. Well, I'm sure once uh, everything clears up, uh, a quick bike ride over to Walden, uh, on a day off or just before school starts, I'm sure we can get in there to say hi and a big thank you to all of them. And, you know, as a parent, we like to thank all those uh, teachers as well. They've done a fabulous job over at Walden. Big fan of Walden. And uh, thanks, Kenny. Get back to your video games or your book or whatever you were working on. Uh, and thanks for uh, taking the time, okay? You're welcome. Okay. Bye-bye now. All right, middle schoolers perspective on what the heck's going on around here, keeping busy, playing video games, uh, a lot of Xbox. Uh, the internet is a marvelous thing. Can you imagine back in 1918 when the Spanish flu rolled through? There's no internet. I saw uh, some discussions on that sort of thing rolling through town just about, uh, just a day ago. And to think of, I mean, you know, <laughs> times have changed. Uh, people are complaining now. I've run out of things on Netflix to watch. What am I going to do? You know, uh, first world pro- world problems, right? All right. So we have a video. Uh, what was it on Twitter? Let me pull it up real quick. Um, the uh, principal at uh, the acting principal at Lake Orion High School had a, a, ni- a nice little video that he. Uh, posted up on Twitter, and we're going to run that now just so you can take a peek. But as a little statement to um, the senior class and the different, you know, the high school students, um, you know, everybody's affected by this uh, uh, situation here, locked at home and all that good stuff. So here's a little message from the acting principal over at Lake Orion High School, Dr. Haas. that we can do in the future. Know that all of the traditional celebrations that uh, we've come accustomed to at Lake Orion, including prom and graduation, uh, we're still doing everything we can to make sure those still happen in some form or fashion. Uh, We know that you've earned a celebration. Uh, You've earned the ability to uh, stand up in front of a group of people and be celebrated. Uh, So know that uh, that weighs heavy with us and uh, all of your administrators are working hard And we, uh, again, look forward to the chance uh, and the time that we can all come together again. But for now, uh, stay strong, stay stay, uh, orient tough, protect the thunder, and, uh, again, take care of each other. Thinking about you guys. All right. So I hope that came through. I think we had a little audio issue at the beginning, but uh, he said a lot of positive things. We'll get through this. Uh, you work as a, a, a team together and some really nice words. Head on over to Lake Orion High School's Twitter page. It's posted right there. Over a thousand views um, already. And uh, transitioning from middle school to high school, especially with those nice uh, comments by uh, uh, acting uh, Principal Haas, Dr. Haas over there at the, the high school, we bring in uh, Abby, a senior at Lake Orion High School. Abby, you there? Yep. 
Hi. Thanks for joining us. Um, full disclosure again, Abby's my daughter, a senior at Lake Orion High School, class of 2020. And, you know, we're talking about uh, the schools being back in session and the effect on uh, students and, you know, just your general feelings. How are you feeling about uh, this whole situation we're going through right now? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely new. Um, it's very unexpected, kind of kind of came out of the blue. Um, it's taking like a little time to get used to everything, but I think we're kind of settling into the rhythm of things being in quarantine. Okay. And uh, we were talking to Kenny earlier, middle schooler, eighth grader at Walden, uh, your brother, and um, he's been keeping... Uh, tabs on his friends through uh, uh, video games and online gaming and, you know, talking to his buddies that way, uh, you know, group of five at a time, multiple hours playing video games, having a good time, having conversations. How are you keeping contact with your friends? Yeah, well, I've been utilizing Zoom um, to kind of keep in touch with everybody. We've been scheduling little meetings here and there to maybe play some online games, uh, just kind of chat about just keeping in with everybody to make sure we're still, we're not isolating alone, but that we're isolating together. Ah, very, uh, very well said. The, um, the aspect of going to school again this Monday um, was it a welcome distraction, some th- a change of pace? Because, uh, you know, leading up to this whole thing was spring break was just around the corner. Next thing you know, we have uh, you get out of school uh, a week early because of the coronavirus and you know, pandemic. And oh, my goodness, um, your thoughts on getting out early and then all of a sudden here's spring break. And now we're going back to school. Yeah, I mean, at first it was kind of nice because, you know, we get like an extra week for spring break. Uh, It was good to kind of have some downtime, relax, uh, hang out with family before I inevitably go off to college in a few months. Um, But after a while, it kind of got monotonous, I guess you could say. And transitioning back into school, it was kind of like a welcome structure, like routine kind of thing. But at the same time, it It's kind of like a culture shock in a way uh, because you're used to sitting in school and desks, uh, talking to people, having a teacher telling you what to do. And now you're (laughs) receiving emails from all of your teachers kind of saying, hey, I need you to complete this by the end of the week or I need you to write some responses to these questions and email them back to me. And just not having the like face to face contact is definitely strange and it takes some time getting used to but i think now that it's been almost a full week with the online schooling it's kind of you're kind of settling into the routine and getting a little more used to it okay now uh everybody listening at home or on facebook this is the lake orion cares podcast i'm ian Locke, and with me is abby a senior at lake orion high school and we're talking about uh you know the school's back in session the impact it has had on some students and the parents and and uh, just the people working at the school district and all that good stuff. So um, have you really gone into depth and talked to your friends as a senior, your fellow seniors, about how this, uh, you know, kind of disruption is affecting you guys? Yeah, um, during like some of our Zoom calls, we've kind of just chatted because I've been I've known these girls most of my life. And um, it's just it's kind of heartbreaking, you know, to see we've been waiting for senior year since I guess kindergarten. Yeah. And we've been so excited to be I wouldn't say top of the food chain, but, you know, kind of like (laughs) the big kids out there and kind of being able to be the oldest members of like the community, like the school community. And just to have that kind of taken away and almost essentially canceled it kind of like it hurts a little bit it's just we've lost our senior year when we were expecting it to be this grand kind of finale yeah to our public school years yeah it's 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 the buildup that you've heard about from other seniors and other classmates Mm -hmm. if they've progressed through school and you're like oh boy this is it right you get the buildup and how do you think this will affect you going forward uh you had I mean, you participate in sports and you do a bunch of other things. Mm -hmm. Um, How has, uh, do you think this will change you going forward the way you see the world or the way you'll, you know, try to make an impact in society? Yeah, definitely. I mean, just these couple weeks, 
kind of being in quarantine, just not being able to go outside and interact with people has definitely made me appreciate uh, the stuff around me. Like usually a lot of the times if I like didn't get a good night's sleep or something, I'd come into school being like, oh, I wish I could just go home and like not come to school. But now I'm like, I want to go back to school. I want to see my friends. So it definitely makes me appreciate kind of like the structure that I had before everything kind of went downhill um <laughs> sideways say, right? yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know it's just it's made me reflect on the time before all of this has happened and how much i'm gonna appreciate the normalcy after yeah. all of this passes well i want to thank you for taking some time and uh humoring your old man here on a <laughs> podcast but uh, we f- felt it was important to hear from you know, uh, students of different grade levels, a senior yeah. and uh, someone in the middle school. And I wasn't able to hunt down an elementary school student. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what their uh, their impression of this would be. Uh, more playtime, I guess, um, <laughs> with their, mm-hmm. with at home or whatever. But um, if you had one thing to say to a teacher or anything, a thank you or who would it be or... What would you like to say? Because, you know, gathering with them is, is kind of off the table right now. Just one, yeah. la- what, one last thing. What, who, what would you like to say or any uh, thoughts? I mean, just to like all the teachers out there, thank you for uh, keeping positive and supporting not only the seniors, but everybody else through these trying times and just the way that they've been helping to keep up with their students. I know that some of my teachers have reached out personally to make sure that everyone's doing okay. And if we need them, they can we can text them or email them. So I just want to say thank you to everyone out there for still keeping in touch with everybody, making sure everyone's doing okay and just helping us to stay positive very good well on those uh, kind words uh, we'll wrap it up here ab thank you for joining us today of course and uh don't hesitate to uh give us a call at the podcast or send some of your friends mm-hmm. our way we'd love to hear what they uh what they're thinking about though Definitely. all of your friends know kind of what i do for a living and usually avoid me because <laughs> <laughs> they know there's a camera around so yeah. anyway well uh thank you so much enjoy your studies and uh have a good day and we wish you luck of course. Thank you so much. All right. Abby, uh, Abby Locke, a senior over at Lake Orion High School, uh, dealing with uh, uh, this whole situation just like we all are. Uh, we all have our own personal way of dealing with it, and it was good to get her perspective today. So thank you, Ab, and uh, once again, uh, taking the time. All right. What else do we have today? Um, at the Orion or Owen TV's uh, YouTube page, we have some new videos posted. Um, that you can take a peek at the uh, the board workshop that uh, um, Orient Township board workshop that was just posted. Um, you can uh, policies and services they were discussing and different things coming down the line. So that's available for you guys to see uh, some new information. You can see the Orient Cares podcast, our first episode, uh, and what it was supposed to look like, and plus other COVID nineteen and outreach elements uh, uh, for uh, the viewers to get some information and residents to know what the heck's going on around here uh, especially the census we don't want to miss out on the census uh, townships always say hey, push the census we got to get those uh, census forms in it is so important for the community to have those uh, up and running um, and in because of funding coming down the line and if we don't get the census elements in we are kind of in trouble in a way you want to get the funding in so i'm going to try to reach out to mr joe johnson once again we'll see if i can get a phone call off to him uh to get join him in just as we wrap up this podcast we are about uh, 47 minutes in to the orion cares podcast we're um let's see joe you there uh, still ringing. All right. So on your, if you can see on the screen on the side, ta- Township Hotline, if you are in need of anything, 248-391-0304, extension 3507. And uh, the school district info is there on the screen as well, lakeorianschools.org. And at the county level, oakgov.org. And NOTA, need a ride? They're out there collecting groceries for those in need. If you didn't know that, 248-693-7100. Joe, are you there? 
I'm here. Okay, he's back for more. We just wrapped up an interview with uh, a senior at uh, Lake Orion High School, Abby Locke. And, uh, you know, a variety of uh, mixed emotions on that one. Of course, uh, you know, I shared with the community that, yep, she's my daughter. And, uh, but, uh, you know, just hearing the thoughts of students this time, you know, it really makes it real, especially on the school side of things. And, um, you know, parents are saying, hey, let's get to school. Let's get to school. Let's get back to education. But there's also that mental health side of things. If, you know, kids grumped out, they can't participate in their sports they can't uh, do that last choir concert or band concert or you know just see their friends and interact you know yeah yeah it's it's tough on them and i feel for them and um it's a year none of us will will forget i'll tell you that that is absolutely true um trying to size you in here to fit you in the, the picture a little bit better um all right so uh, your thoughts so far this past week, a lot of different things happening and going on that, uh, it's like when talking to Mark, we say there's a moving target, not only for the schools, but everybody else, you know? Yeah. Some, uh, some misinformation that went out a few days ago was, uh, the issue of voting, uh, right. you know, warm weather is, is, uh, on its way. We had a 70 degree day yesterday. And people want to put their boats in the water. And uh, some misinformation went out that said you're not allowed to do it during the quarantine. And people lost their minds. (laughs) Um, Chris Barnett was quick to clarify and say, no, that's not the case. Uh, You can put your boat in the water. Just avoid bringing out friends and family and turning it into a party and putting 10 people on a boat and meeting at the sandbar, (laughs) that sort of thing. If, If you want to go out and enjoy this weather and isolate yourself, that's that's great. Just uh, keep the uh, social distancing going. Yeah, we uh, we mentioned that earlier, but you cannot say it enough. And the video is out there rotating on the message boards at or on uh, Orient Neighborhood Television's government channel. That's Comcast Channel 20. Uh, we have that on a loop. <laughs> uh, just warning people, have fun, but geez, be smart. You know, I mean, especially when they say this is supposedly the peak week or, you know, the, the, the week where we're hopefully hitting the top of the curve and good things are starting to come online. But don't drop your guard and don't uh, forget why we're doing this. Uh, it's, it can be easy to do after you get annoyed <laughs> with seeing the same four walls after a while. Yeah. And then did you touch on the uh, the kids who are missing out on birthdays uh, during this time? Uh, your uh, segue couldn't have been better because we have the video <laughs> right here. Um, I'm going to bring – let's see what we can do if we can bring that up. Um, here we are on our YouTube page, and here it is. It's running. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, the kids are having a good time with it. It's just a real pick-me-up. Uh, the footage uh, – the video is put together by – Mr. Joe Johnson himself and uh, one of my neighbors uh, enjoyed one of these. So the video, it's, it's, I just heard sirens going, oh no, what? And you think negative. And I just grabbed a camera and ran out and it was a birthday celebration. So we were able to get a little bit of footage here to, um, uh, to share with everybody. And uh, I think they've had uh, close to 30 of these so far. And uh, they're running through April, I believe. One comment that I saw when I posted the video on Facebook was uh, a family had commented and said that their child received the uh, the treatment, and the kid said it was my best birthday ever. <laughs> so even during this stressful time, people are finding moments of happiness and kudos to the police and fire department for making it happen. Absolutely. Um, it's it's one of those make you smile kind of moments in instances where you're kind of not smiling all that much. So uh, I want to thank you for heading out and getting that footage for uh, for the community and, and putting that video together. It was great. And uh, I think, like I said, it's going through April. So if you're interested in having a birthday uh, um, drive-by, Make sure you get a hold of the township uh, quick because they're booking it up. I mean, they're so popular, and like you said, the kids are just having a blast with it. And it's it, again, it's a it's a big smile in a situation that doesn't normally bring the joy, right? Yeah, and I, I think you can reach out to the uh, police chief, like Orion Police okay. Chief, if you want to 
schedule something. They're co- the police department and the fire department are coordinating together. So uh, I think it's like police chief at Lake dot com or something like okay. that. You can look it up. Yeah, and um, just to wrap up here, about fifty two minutes into the Lake Orion Cares podcast episode two live this week on Facebook. Um, is uh, the I got to get it to the athletic department over at the high school. They are um, trying to uh, shine a light on the spring sports athletes who have missed out on their season. And uh, the, as you see on the screen, I don't know if you can see it, Joe, but we have them up. Um, uh, the different athletes they have a little placard that uh, describes who they are, a picture. GPAs, the academics are outstanding for these athletes. What are they doing next? And it's a, it's a nice tribute uh, to those students who worked so hard for so many years as athletes, uh, dragon athletes out on the field of play and to uh, just be recognized like they they thought they were going to be, you know, in the uh, in June. So, uh, so this is a nice little tribute. If you get a chance, uh, check out, uh, hop on Twitter, search up Chris Bell, who's the athletic director, and, or Lake Orion Athletics or LOHS uh, Sports, that sort of thing, and uh, take a peek at the different posts. So, that's the last bit we have here. Do you have any parting uh, and news or information for anybody? Just um, one of the things we were going to mention is how the township had secured um, 600 testing kits that they were going to disperse among um, 10 different uh, townships and uh, communities. Uh, So that's really awesome that people are going to be able to get tested here in this area. Awesome. And that is great news. It's fantastic. And the last thing I'm going to share here, again, is Orion Strong. This just kind of came out yesterday. A new moniker put out by m and Graphics and the township. Uh, there's stickers. And if you uh, donate uh, X amount of dollars or just buy a sticker, the, f- the funds go to help the community and, uh, and those in need. And if you donate to Love, Inc., of uh, North Oakland County. The webpage is on your screen.org backslash Orion COVID, or you go to oriontownship.org and uh, get a hold of them to say, hey, we donated at the Orion Center. We got some food in there. Uh, a sticker can be yours. So it's just a nice way of uh, um, showing your pride in, uh, in the township and everything we're doing here and that you're supporting what's going on and those around you and the community. Joe, any final words? We're going to wrap up here. No, it's just uh, Lake Orion never ceases to amaze me to all come together and help out your your neighbors. And uh, let's keep it going and flatten the curve, and hopefully we'll see you on the other side of this real soon. Uh, very well said, and uh, we'll see you next week, uh, 3 p.m., probably Thursday again. Just uh, watch your Facebook feeds for the live uh, Lake, Orion Ca- or Lake Orion Cares uh, podcast. Um, I'm Ian Locke. Uh, with me is Joe Johnson. I want to thank uh, Mark Snyder from the uh, Director of Communications at the Lake Orion Schools for joining us today and our Lake Orion students for offering their insight. And we hope it was informative. And reach out to us at orionontv.org if you'd like to uh, uh, offer suggestions or input. We'll take it. Or call us at 248-393-1060 and leave a message at Orion Neighborhood Television. That's it for this edition. We'll see you next week on Lake Orion Cares Podcast. Take it easy. Thank you.